cancelled. Sweezy. You know, it's time for us to scrape the bottom of the barrel once again. Uh, for those of you who don't know what scraping the bottom of the barrel is, it's uh, basically I find one of those numbered articles on BuzzFeed, and we go over it, which is me trying to find content, which is me scraping the bottom of the barrel for content. And uh, so let's get into it. So this is an interesting one. You know, obviously we all know that I am the master of solving relationship problems. I've even thought about like getting like a marriage counseling license out of spite. People who talk shit, Josh. Um, so uh, this is from BuzzFeed. People are sharing green lights in relationships, and I agree with every single one of them. So I thought this would be a fun opportunity to find all the green lights or the red flags in me. So how many red flags does Sweezy have? So uh, let's get into it. I think it's time for us to get started, folks. Let me get a sippy sip of this Waterloo, not sponsored. And let's begin. People are sharing green lights in relationships, and I agree with every single one of them. I agree with every single one of them. Who's this author? I don't know. No one important. Okay, number one, being able to make each other laugh, understanding the other person's sense of humor is critical in long-term relationships. Now, folks, y'all know me as the funniest person in you know, probably you know. You're listening to this podcast because I am the funniest person you know. Uh, for the for for all of it, so you think if I'm gonna date someone, they're not gonna think I'm fucking hilarious. They already know I'm fucking hilarious. That's like a big part of the package. That's like the the ra- the very nice wrapping over the shitty present that they're getting. And this, they're definitely fucking laughing at their thing. If you don't think someone's like, yeah, you're definitely not funny. I'm like, bitch, you're here right now. You think I'm funny? So shut the fuck. Up. Pretty bold of you little fucks to assume that I'm not God. Yeah, you know what the fuck is going on. And I really like that. So, uh, yeah, so obviously I'm funny. And there's no situation in the world that could determine that I am not funny enough in a relationship for someone else. That is utter regards bullshit. And uh, that's the way it is. It's only 15 of these, so I see. I don't know how long I'm going to drag this out. <laughs> Uh, when you are around them, you feel like your best version of yourself slash the person you want to be. They aren't changing you so much as naturally bringing out your preferred version of your genuine self. Now, this is more or less like a speaking of for the other person type situation that I can't speak for. Uh, one of those I can't, obviously, with the sense of humor, I can obviously speak for myself. Um, all the haters out there will hate. But, uh, naturally, though... Um, you know, you try to bring out the best in people. I would say I try to bring out the best in people. Like, uh, I try to, I try to encourage people to do good things. Like I try to, I try to encourage Micah to like follow like any of his fucking dreams. And, uh, it's hard to encourage him and it fucking frustrates me. So everyone, hashtag pray for Micah. Remember that shit. Um, but you know, I always try, I always try to make people like at least encourage them to do good shit or cool shit. You know, I'm kind of a trendsetter myself. I I see myself as like a trendsetter. So I obviously can see myself bringing out the best of someone, but I could also see myself bringing out the worst in someone. Like, uh, I think I, I think I have a friend. I think I brought out the worst in her. Uh, the, so the giraffe at the Nashville zoo, um, had a baby and then the giraffe accidentally stepped on the baby and the baby died. And, my first reaction was to laugh, which is not, this is not funny, but I started laughing and I think she was laughing too. And I'm like, I know this isn't funny. I don't know why I'm laughing right now. So I can't bring out the worst in people too. So let's not like put me on a high horse all of a sudden, folks. You know what the fuck you're listening to. Uh, what was it? Congratulations. You played yourself. Yeah, it's close enough. All right. I think I rearranged what I used to have on it and also been a while since I've used this. Um, Number three, when during an argument, both parties take time to listen and respond thoughtfully to their partner and show genuine concern for the distress in their partner, even if it is small. Um, how would I answer this question? That is a good, how would I answer this prompt? Um, that is the, that's what normal people do, but sometimes you argue, uh, just be mad at each other, go away for a second, and then like, you know what, I, I realized your situation and uh, I was wrong, <laughs> and uh, it's probably just in it for the heat of the moment. But uh, so I apologize for all this shit. So I think you know it's good. 
I can't imagine at the time, sometimes when you're in the moment, it's hard to, but when you get to like go back to on your own and then like think about what went on and you're like, okay, think about their situation and blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, they were actually fucking right. So eh, like the adult drivers, it depends. Situation like that, that's the only thing I can really say there. Um, eventually realizing if it's like an ongoing fight forever, eventually someone's going to like, you got to figure out at some point someone's wrong or there's like a tough situation involved. But, uh, yeah, that's the only thing I really say there, folks. I mean, okay. Um, four, did they return their shopping carts to the cart return after grocery shopping? I stand by shopping cart theory as a good indicator of a person's moral compass. See, here, here's the situation here. So, so like, when I was a kid, you know, you have to go shopping with your mom, and then she lets you buy, like, three boxes of uh, Nutty Bars and shit like that, you know. Damn it. Day two of this fucking diet. Um, so, um, so yeah, and my mom would always force me to put the cart back where it was. So now I just get used to it. And then you like meet friends, you work at like grocery stores and shit like that. And they're like, ah, God damn it. I'm so like, you know, I had to do the cards. I get so pissed at people who just fucking leave their cart by their car or whatever. Like those pieces of shit. And so I'm like, oh yeah, I don't want to be a piece of shit. So I always return the car. The trick is, see, here's what the trick is, people. So you don't have this problem. You're actually, you look good in front of the ladies. What you do is like my mom and a lot of other people, they try to park as close to the front as possible. So they don't have to walk as far. What you need to do is park as close as possible to the cart return. That one, when you put all your shit in your car, easy return. Like I always try to get a parking spot right next to the cart return. That is the secret. And fellas, if this is like, Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. I accidentally pressed that. But, fellas, if this is any indicator for a woman, what you need to do is follow what I did and just put it right next to there. Because, like, then you're like, I'm not going to leave this right next to her. It's fucking right there. And you do that and you're like, wow, this is a really stand-up guy. And then you realize he has a podcast. All right. Next one, number five here. Um, if they treat you well when it all goes sideways, many people are good at being loving. When life is easy, their true selves show when life is hard. Now, that I agree with. So if you really love someone and you're mad at someone, you, you still, I mean, you may be mad at them. You don't be an asshole. You just be upset with them. <laughs> like, you still, <clears throat> you realize you just get upset with someone, but you still love them. It's that, it's that situation. Like, like I, get mad at my, I get mad at Micah every day. Hashtag. Pray for Micah. He doesn't fu- like I text him and take like three days to respond, but I I'll tag him in a fucking stupid fucking meme on Instagram. Hashtag pray for Micah. Hashtag pray for Micah. And then he responds immediately to them like bitch, fucking respond to my text, you goddamn fucking idiot. Hashtag pray for Micah. But I also love Micah, so the situation's different, folks. That's the way it is. Um, and then. Josh just has a stupid name, folks. Nothing wrong with Josh. He just has a stupid name, and his wife cuts his hair. And I've been a big other list of problems I have with him. Number six, they find the little things that separate you from everyone else and celebrate them. Isn't that what you... Isn't that... I thought that was, like, a normal thing people were supposed to do. It's like, isn't that the reason why you like someone? You're not like, oh, I just like her because she has big tits. I'm like, there's a lot of big tits out there, folks. There's a lot of big tits. Um, I like that. You know, I really like well, like them of all sizes. You know, all sizes are great. All sizes matter when it, in regards to tits. Now, I hope women... I wonder if women will say that about penis sizes, because I'm fine with mine, but some of guys aren't fine with theirs. Because you they look at porn, and they just see, like, these massive hogs, like, the side of their size of their forearm. I, I see that in, like, porn. Like, you see, like, the thumbnail of, like, this massive dick. And I'm like, that has to hurt. Like, that has to hurt the woman. Like, I can't imagine that not. And... I read something like a lot of women don't like it when a dick just plummels their cervix or whatever. Um, anyways, off that, that's not. So, yeah, no, back to the things like things that separate from everyone else. Um, is that kind of what you want in someone like this is that's why you keep someone around. There's like certain things about them that you really like. And that's why you keep them around. That's what I do with my friends. Hashtag pray for Micah. As you would say. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've always thought that was like a reason you kept someone around. So maybe I'm just different um but apparently I'm, I'm not a chad i'm a was it i'm not an alpha or a beta i'm a gamma over i think i saw that i'm like i'll be okay with calling myself a gamma if that makes people shut the fuck up about being if i'm an alpha or a beta or whatever the shit whatever the fuck they do it's like it was like they're fucking uh 
Oh no, actually, before I go on to number seven, I had the the revelation that uh, the revelation I had is that instead of making up excuses for all the dumb shit I do, I can just blame my zodiac sign. Like for example, I can say, "Oh, sorry, I punched you in the face. I'm a Leo." So, oh, sorry, I uh, oh, sorry I was late. I'm a Leo. Uh, Sorry I got you pregnant. I'm a Leo. Shit like that, you know? I can just say whatever the hell I want, and uh, that will justify my actions. So that's the way it is. But don't get anyone pregnant. Um, Number seven, uh, you generally enjoy one another's company during dull moments. Life's full of them, and you're going to want a partner who can enjoy them with. Also, seemed like this seems like something like if you live together with someone, like it's not going to be fun 24 7 like think about yourself sitting out if you're like alone and s- you're not alone you're single i uh, think about you're being single and you're just like watching tv you know doing shit you know just doing your own shit you know and it's like it's not all fun and games sometimes you just sit around enjoy dull moments like honey can you pass the popcorn yeah sure honey pass the popcorn shit like that um so you know i don't know uh, yeah i was assume like that's just a part of life. Maybe I'm just too, maybe I'm just too smart for this shit. Maybe I'm too smart for everyone. Um, number eight, if you set a boundary, they respect it. Yeah, that's just in general with friendships too. Like you just respect other people's boundaries always. If you're an adult and you can't respect someone's boundaries, like anyone's boundaries, you, um, you probably need to see a therapist or someone or something i don't know i don't know how to fix that problem if you can't like respect someone's boundaries that's that's a problem like when i lived with roommates it's like i'm not gonna go in your guys' room i'll respect your boundaries and that's how i did things um number nine they're okay with spending time apart a significant other that can spend their own time alone and doesn't absolutely need you to be happy is a major green flag so nevertheless when i think about this uh it's like the difference between a dog and a cat and like a dog has to follow you everywhere and like love you 100%. And then a cat's like, I'm going to do my own thing. And then when I want, when I plan to love you, I'm going to give you my love. And that's why when you meet someone who's like, who's like, I'm a dog person, fuck cats. And like, oh, you have uh, emotional problems where you need to be, need attention all the time, folks. I need attention all the time, but I don't, but I like cats. So that's not my problem. That sounds like a problem with you that you, don't handle correctly and uh i just start a podcast and you buy a dog and uh and then you meet some people who give away their dogs and then before that dog dies you buy a new dog so number 10 open communication about sex and feelings holding that stuff in for too long can lead to built up resentment communication breakdowns confusion depression all sorts of issues down the road now that's a problem I have when couples are like, yeah, we, we just don't have sex anymore. And like, have you guys talked about it? No. I'm like, okay. And there's probably a communication problem there, bucko. Um, talk about your feelings. Like, I mean, like when someone's making you upset, like you gotta, you need to tell them if you want to not be upset with that person, you gotta fix that situation. I don't know. I think just a lot of, a lot of dumb people in the world. Um, I talk too much. So that stuff's getting out there quick. So, uh, not my problem. Definitely communicate about sex. I don't know why people don't communicate about sex more. Like, it's just weird. People don't. And they're like, I don't like this. I'm like, why? what's wrong with it for you? And what's wrong with it for you? Okay, maybe fix that problem and uh, start flicking the bean and nothing. Shit like that. I don't know. What the hell? Okay. I need, I need some more drink of sparkling water. Diet time. No alcohol. This is me now. All right. Number 11, about the ability to apologize. If your partner never sees their faults, it'll never work. Yep, if you don't see your own problems, there's a lot of, you have a lot of more problems than that. Um, yeah, this is one that you should learn pretty quickly into the relationship. If they're not willing to apologize, then, um, yeah, that, that's a big problem. If someone's, if you're wrong, see people, if, you, if you're wrong and you get called out for being wrong, just admit you're wrong. Because what's the worst that can happen? Like, oh, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Um, I'll be right again one day. And uh, when that day comes, I will be there when I am 
Correct. And, uh, yeah, that's all I can say. I just keep burping all the time. I don't even think I burped as much. Maybe I don't talk to myself as much. Maybe that's a different situation. Like, I don't talk when I'm alone. I just think things in my head and then sing sometimes. That's, I guess that's the situation I'm in. Number 12, encourages growth but doesn't try to change your foundation. That's true. From all my ex-girlfriends, you can't change someone. That's right, folks. I've been attempted to be changed many times. Um, different hairstyles that didn't suit my personality. Uh, wanting me to uh, change my life to live in a small town with them. None of that. No, that'll work if you like. You have goals and dreams and a personality of your own. Uh, you got to meet someone else with a personality of their own and just hang out and have fun, or get married when someone's seventeen. I don't know. Um, they remember small details from your con- this is number fourteen. They remember small details from your conversations. It means they pay attention to you and what your interests are. Now, yeah, shouldn't you pay attention when someone talks to you? I don't know. I talk a lot, so. Um, yeah, I was trying to remember, like, small things. Like, if people say something that's important, I'm like, all right, I'll keep that docked in the memory for a while. Keep that in there. Um, yeah, if you like someone, you're going to pay attention to what they say. You're going to enjoy what they say because you like that bitch. I love you, bitch. I'm never going to stop loving you, bitch. You get that video, you got to like the video and leave a review and subscribe to the show. Now, I don't make the rules. I just enforce them, folks. That's just how it is. But, you know... If you like someone, you're going to pay attention to this shit. And last but not least, you can go on a road trip together and still like each other at the end of it. Yeah, that's just that's just more of like... Yeah, that is more like when you're home, like, Kate, like say you need a little bit of space. I'm like, I'm going to go hang out with my friend. And then you're like, okay. Or I'm going to go for a walk by myself or whatever. Okay. And uh, when you trust each other, you're not worried about someone cheating and shit like that. Um, but no. Um, I like that. So... Yeah, I guess if you end up on a road trip, like, you don't have the ability to leave each other. And so you come back, and you're like, that was fun. Let's uh, lay around and do nothing. It's always weird when you get back from vacation. I'm like, what am I going to do now? That's why I always like to finish it late in the evening. So I'm like, all right, time to go to bed. And shit like that. So, um, so yeah, nevertheless, I'll persist here. So going over uh, all 15 of these facts, um, the biggest thing I can say in regards to all of it is if you actually like someone... Um, you're going to show it regardless if you want to or not. And if you're a shitty person, you're going to show it regardless if you want to or not, folks. So that's me dissecting a little bit of BuzzFeed today, folks. A little bit of BuzzFeed in my life. A little bit of Micah. Pray for, pray for Micah. A little bit of Josh's definitely what you not need. Micah, pray. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. And uh, I guess, is that all my thoughts on BuzzFeed? Um, am I, this is what, this is the determination for you folks. Am, do I have more green flags or red flags, folks? You decide, leave it in the comment section down below. That is what you will decide for me today, is if I am or am not a red flag or a green flag. Figure out, figure that shit out. I, that's your job. Figure that shit out for you. Um, all right. What's going on, my fellow Schwoke Lord? Hope you enjoyed that highlight from one of the great shows that I make. Uh, if you want to watch more clips or even full episodes, go check them out over here and down below and everywhere else. Uh, stay awesome.